So I'm building this new bike and I'm really excited to tell you about it. Let's get into it. So the first bike that I ever rebuilt uh, or bought was a 1989 giant iguana. Black chrome finish, uh, was in pretty good condition and that started my love for these sort of old vintage mountain bikes. And the giant bikes aren't really, I don't wanna say they're not desirable, but uh, people aren't necessarily seeking them out like old specialized stump jumpers, maybe old specialized rock hoppers. And so found this giant bike, rebuilt it, loved it. I've got a video coming about that bike and about that build uh, in the future. I really liked finding that giant bike because uh, Giant was headquartered or is headquartered in the US in the town that I used to live in, Thousand Oaks. And so I just really liked the mix of local business, um, the history of Giant Bikes, and specifically I really was interested in the history of this logo because the, the, the logo that was on this Giant Bike um, was really cool. And I could only find it from bikes from 1989. Um, which I believe was the first year that Giant made their own bikes, not as an OEM manufacturer for Schwinn and others. And so I've really fallen in love with this old logo Giant bike uh, from 1989. And after moving to Salt Lake City, I found on Marketplace a Teal Giant Sedona um, that was teal and yellow. Yellow is one of my favorite colors. And I just had to have it. I mean, it, it was perfect. It had all the old giant livery. It had uh, yellow brake cables from the factory. I found this bike on Marketplace, the bike I'm building in this video. Found it on Marketplace and I bought it for 40 bucks. And that's why I love these old bikes, right? You can get old bikes for pretty cheap as long as you're patient. And uh, they're just as good as new bikes. The geometry is the same as modern gravel bikes and um, with no suspension or, or things like that that um, can wear out, they're pretty much bomb proof and they're gonna last, you know, 100 years. They've already lasted 30 and they're perfect. After you restore them, they're perfectly brand new. So this is the story of building a 1989 giant Sedona teal. And I went a little crazy with this one, um, but I like it. I'm excited to hear your thoughts. Let's get into the build. So this is my first preliminary cleaning of the bike. Usually I'll buy a bike, it'll sit around for a little bit and I'll get to it when I can. So this was a little sprint of when I had some time to give it a good base cleaning to start and uh, wait until I can tear it down to give it a deeper cleaning. But that is what this was.
obviously my first time trying to get off a cupping cone bottom bracket. I used many different tools to start and I could not figure it out, so I went to YouTube. Okay, so I just won my first battle with uh, a cup and cone bottom bracket. I, of course, got stuck on this part. My wrench kept falling off. And so I went to the internet and uh, found some YouTube videos about how to get off the um, permanent side, more permanent side of a cup and cone bottom bracket. And essentially what that uh, solution was, was uh, tightening a bolt around this plate in the bottom bracket. And as you're tightening it, both sides squeeze the, the uh, plate that you're trying to unscrew. And by nature of that friction coming together and unscrewing, uh, it comes out. And so I didn't have a bolt, I didn't have a bunch of washers, and I didn't have a pipe. So I was looking around my shop and I found that I had a um, crank puller. And, uh, and so let me, I'll, I'm gonna pull it out and I'll show you um, what uh, I used to actually get this side of the cup and cone bottom bracket out. You can see there's the hex tool. That's the bolt connected to the hex tool. And then this is the nut with a threaded end. So that then when I was tightening it and tightening it, boom, came off. The problem is I'm not able to get this undone with the tools that I have. My vice is not strong enough. It keeps coming off the table. So I'm gonna move on from this part and um, keep building bikes. I have another crank puller, uh, which is good, but I might need this freewheel tool soon. So right. saving this project for another day. This is the bike that I am stripping down to use the components on the giant Sedona. I got this bike for $200 on eBay from a local seller and it's a size small and I wasn't riding it that much so I decided to break it down and use all of its parts and its basket for this new giant bike. This is gonna be decoration in the house um, until I decide to sell it. It's near main condition, so anyone who gets this frame uh, would be really stoked in my opinion, but uh, just tore down the parts. That was easier than I thought, uh, quick, at least quicker than I thought. And uh, yeah, this bike wasn't my size, but it gave me all the components that I needed for the bike I really want. So I'm, I'm excited because I just took this part off and as you can see, there is that little plug part that's sticking up. And that plug part is preventing me from putting in the bottom bracket 
into this bike. But I took it out and it is plastic, which means I can just cut it off. I thought I was gonna have to grind metal. Whew. Okay, I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with this chrome polish. That's all, after I let the polish dry, that is all dirt. Uh, this has all been dirt that has come off chrome. And it's actually making it a little more shiny. Not a mirror finish, but it's looking a lot better. color scheme um, but I think I'll be used to it I think it'll grow on me it's very different and uh, but that's what I want um, I'm super stoked on it so far I wish or in or I think I might go look for some chrome shifters I have a chrome stem or a silver stem rather I don't have a bit shiny front coming I want at the same time. Uh, brakes, silver brakes. Um, but I'm really stoked. I think it's looking pretty fresh, pretty cool. And uh, I'm gonna call it a day here. And um, yeah, come back to it on Monday. I'll come back to the build on Monday uh, when I have more parts, but Chrome's will be shiny, polish it once, maybe I'll do it again. But it's looking pretty good. Pretty uh pretty out there.
Okay, so I'm now at the point where I have cable housing on, uh, I'm running cables, getting tensions right, um, then I have to fit a chain, then put on the basket, then take it for a ride tomorrow and take some photos of it. I'm super stoked with how this has come out. Um, all the yellows are relatively matching, which is uh, hard to do with Amazon parts. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, really so good so far. So I'm gonna finish it up and get it cross finish line. So I have the bike built and I'm down to the, the very last thing and I'm unsure because I kind of have this theme of of uh, like chrome, gray, yellow, and this blue. I'm not sure if this gold chain really works. Um, I got it because I think it'd be fun but I also think like a bright silver chain might be the way to go. Uh, for this build, but I think I'm gonna leave the gold chain on because it's sort of special uh, Take some photos of it see what I think and Can only switch back over to the silver chain have had so much fun building this bike. Uh, this is the first bike I sort of took an out there approach uh, to building it. I really uh, wanted this bike to stand out. I wanted to use its original elements to uh, accentuate um, the colors and the design around it. Um, it took a lot of inspiration from the fact that it shipped with yellow Shimano brake cables from the factory. So put on some new brake cables, um, got these yellow tires, which were super sweet. These came from the sort of like a single speed giant BMX um, sort of bikes. So I'm very thankful that there was tan wall yellow bike tires that matched the yellow of the whole bike. That was phenomenal. Uh, the grips, yellow. The pedals, yellow. Um, and I took the basket from an old bike that I had uh, here in the shop, which is now stripped down to the frame. I actually took all those components because they uh, were essentially brand new on a small rock hopper that I had. But everything on that rock hopper was essentially brand new, so I switched most all of it to this bike. Um, 
at the end of the day, like building bikes is just a way for me to get off the computer, to work with my hands, to um, get into somewhat of a meditative state and to really just relieve stress and work on something, right? I like having projects, I like making videos, um, but usually I need things to make videos about. So it sort of gets two projects done in one. Yeah, I'm super excited about this one. I, I'm, I like really want to take it to Giant Headquarters in <laughs> Thousand Oaks and really show it off. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is uh, the first in a new series I'm calling Craft Bike Studio. Um, that's what I want to start calling this place. And uh, I want to start building and refurbishing more bikes, um, get more people on bikes. I want to get kids specifically with heart conditions onto bikes. So that's the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Sort of like a visual ASMR. Um, in future videos, perhaps I might not listen to things um, on a speaker so I can get more of the sound of building a bike. But yeah, just wanted to share the process, share the build, um, share the inspiration, and share the final outcome. Because I think this bike is super cool. I don't want to ride it and dirty the tires or anything yet. Um, but this is one of my favorite builds I've ever done. It's an old giant. It's in great condition after refurbishment. Uh, I matched all the yellow colors. Sort of hits all of these uh, different goals that I wanted to meet. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I will see you on the next one. I've got a few videos on a few more bikes coming your way. Peace.